Chris McKaylee, and in today's video podcast, I wanted to go through the state constitutional provisions related to California election laws. California's elections are governed principally by Article 2 of the state constitution, as well as, of course, uh, thousands of statutes in the California Elections Code. Uh, Article 2 of the state constitution uh, deals with voting, initiatives, referenda, and recalls, and was amended by Prop 14 on the June 1976 ballot. And Article 2 contains 20 sections, and the following are of interest related to elections. Article uh, 2, Section 1 specifies that all political power is inherent in the people of this state, and that government is instituted for the people's protection, security, and benefit, and that they have the right to alter or reform it when the public good may require so. Section 2 provides that a United States citizen who is 18 years of age or older and a resident in this state may vote. Section 2.5 specifies that a voter who casts a vote in an election in accordance with the laws of the state must have his or her vote counted. Section 3 provides that the legislature defines residents and provides for voter registration and free elections in the state. Section 4 states that the legislature may prohibit improper practices that affect elections and provide for the disqualification of electors while they're mentally incompetent, imprisoned, or on parole for the conviction of a felony. Section 5 of Article 2 provides that a voter nomination primary election is to be conducted to select the candidates for congressional and state elected offices here in the state of California and that all voters may vote at a voter-nominated primary election for any candidate for congressional and state elected office without regard to the political party preference disclosed by the candidate or the voter. And of course, the voter has to be qualified to vote for candidates for the office in question in order to do so. Section 5 also provides that the candidates who are the top two vote-getters at a voter-nominated primary election for a congressional or state elected office must, regardless of their party preference, compete in the ensuing general election. Section 7 states that all judicial, school, county, and city offices, as well as the state superintendent and public instruction, are nonpartisan races. Section 7 requires that voting be secret. Section 8 provides that the initiative is the power of the electors to propose statutes and amendments to the Constitution and to adopt or reject statutes. In addition, an initiative measure may be proposed by presenting to the Secretary of State a petition that sets forth the text of the proposed statute or amended to, amendment to the Constitution, and then it's certified to have been signed by electors equal in number to 5% in the case of a statute or 8% in the uh, case of a constitutional amendment of all the votes for the candidates for governor in the last gubernatorial election. Section 9 provides that the referendum is the power of the electors to approve or reject statutes or parts of statutes except four types. Urgency statutes, statutes calling elections, statutes providing for tax levies, and statutes providing for appropriations for the usual current expenses of the state. In addition, a referendum under Section 9 may be proposed by presenting to the Secretary of State within 90 days after the enactment of the statute a petition that's certified to have been signed by electors equal in number to 5% of the votes for all candidates for governor at the last gubernatorial election. And it has to specify whether the voters are being asked that the statute or part of the statute to be submitted to the electors. Section 10 of Article 2 states that an initiative statute or a referendum that's approved by a majority of votes takes effect on the fifth day after the Secretary of State files the statement of the vote for the election at which that measure is voted on but the measure may provide that it becomes operative after that effective date. 
And if a referendum petition is filed against a part of a statute, the remainder of the statute is not delayed from going into effect. Moreover, under Section 10, if the provisions of two or more measures approved at the same election conflict, then the provisions of the measure receiving the highest number of affirmative votes prevails and is therefore enacted. Additionally, the legislature may amend or repeal a referendum statute. And before circulation of an initiative or referendum petition for signatures, a copy of that measure, that petition is required to be submitted to the Attorney General of California, who thereafter prepares a title and summary. Section 11 states that initiative and referendum powers may be exercised by the electors of each city or county under procedures that the legislature provides, except for a charter city. Section 12 states that no amendment to the Constitution and no statute proposed to the electors by the legislature or by initiative that names an individual to hold any office or names or identifies any private corporation to perform any function or to have any power or duty may be submitted to the electors or have any effect. Section 13 specifies that the recall is the power of the electors to remove an elected officer. And Section 14 provides that the recall of a state officer is initiative, uh, initiated by delivering to the Secretary of State a petition that alleges a reason for the recall. But note the sufficiency of that reasonable is not reviewable and proponents have 160 days to file the signed petitions. Section 14 also provides that a petition to recall a statewide officer must be signed by electors equal to 12% of the last vote for the office, with signatures from each of five counties equal in number to 1% of the last vote for the office in that county. Also, signatures to recall state senators, members of the assembly, members of the Board of Equalization, and judges of the courts of appeals and the trial courts must be equal in number to 20% of the last vote for that office. And section 15 states that an election to determine whether to recall an officer and if appropriate to elect a successor must be called by the governor and held not less than 60 days nor more than 80 days from the date of certification of the sufficient number of signatures. Section 15 also provides that a recall election may be conducted within 180 days from the date of certification of sufficient signatures in order that the election may be consolidated with the next regularly scheduled election that's occurring wholly or partially within the same jurisdiction in which that recall election is held. If the number of voters eligible to vote at the next regularly scheduled election equal at least 50% of the voters eligible to vote at the recall election. Finally, under Section 15, if the majority vote on the question is to recall, then that officer is removed. And if there is a candidate, the candidate who receives a plurality is the successor. And as you would expect, the recalled officer may not be a candidate. Then we have section 16 of article two, which says that the legislature must provide for the circulation, filing and certification of petitions, nominations of candidates, as well as the recall election. Section 17 states, if recall of the governor or secretary of state is initiated, then the recall duties of that office are to be performed by the lieutenant governor or the controller respectively. Section 18 provides that a state officer who is not recalled must be reimbursed by the state for the officer's recall election expenses that have been legally and personally incurred. And another recall may not be initiated against that same officer until at least six months after the election. Section, uh, section 19 provides the legislature may specify recall of local officers. And section 19 does not affect counties and cities who charters, whose charters actually provide for a recall process. 
And finally, Article 2, Section 20 provides that terms of elected officers provided for by this Constitution, other than members of the legislature, commence on the Monday after January 1 following their election, and the election must be held in the last even-numbered year before their term expires.